Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world, today the Dub Dog and I are going to get this 1976 Ford running for the first time in 18 years. And then we're going to go do snow nuts. No way it starts right up. There's a trick to it. So we picked this thing up at an online auction here a month or so ago. It's been sitting in the yard. I don't know anything about it. It's got round headlights, so that makes it a uh, 77, 78 and older. So it's a, it's a dense side Ford, 73 to 79. It's not a 79, because it doesn't have square headlights. Some of the 78s had square headlights. People will argue with you about that. It's a two wheel drive, long box. It's got an automatic. It's got a topper. It's got some white spokes that we put on it from another rig they weren't on it it's got a bug visor it's got some bumper guards i don't know nothing about it all i know is it feels like four degrees but it's actually 17 degrees but that wind is she's bitter today so we're gonna drag this thing where it's a little bit warmer as much as duff loves it frolicking in the snow i'm not a fan let's get this thing inside hopefully this one runs Fords are not our friends lately, but this one's gonna be the ticket. It's gonna be a V8, it's probably a 390. Hopefully it's not. I'd take a 302 or a 351, but I'm thinking it's gonna be a 360. Maybe it's a six cylinder. 306, those things are the best engines ever, right, Dolph? All right, I'm gonna go take the old skid steer and we're gonna hook on the rear bumper. What has gotten into you? How excited are you today? Super excited. The Zumi machine. Like I said, this thing was last tagged in 05. It's 2023 right now, as of the recording of this. So this thing's been off the road for 18 years, Duffel up, I guess. What do you think? We gonna be able to get it running? Oh yeah. Did you check it out for critters? He says, this thing is certified critter free. The old country squire, probably not. Oh, let's go back and look at the other side. So it's a little bit cleaner than this side. Better yet, you guys can look at the back side while I hook on to it with the skid steer because that thing's got heat. It's kind of a tight spot for me to hook on to it with Bernie and then I'd have to get out with the bobcat. I just sit inside and be lazy. Easy on the Hoover Sneef, pal. Oh, yeah. We love the Hoover Sneef around here, don't we? Yeah. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, outrageous! Get the snow. Get the Hoover Sneef. You know what the street value of this stuff must be? This is pure snow! It's everywhere! Have you any idea what the street value of this mountain is? There's just mountains of it everywhere. Everywhere. Mountains. 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 More mountains. Who says it's flat in North Dakota? They obviously haven't been here in the winter. Well, what do you say, Duff? We got her in the shop, got her thawed out. You gonna pop the hood for us? He says, be my pleasure. Whew, that was a little bit more work than usual, he says. Here's some uh, add-on aftermarket. Just kidding, it's a modified hood latch of sorts. And it needs some TLC. Sure enough, she is an FE of sorts. Looks like it had air conditioning at one time. You can tell by the way that it is. This is an Aspen. You can tell that it's an Aspen tree because of the way it is. Oh, the hoses are just kind of hanging out there. And there's the compressor bracket. Looks like it's got Ford's DuraSpark system. Power brakes, it should have discs. Power steering. Oh, there it is. It's got the hybrid option and the lower rad meter hose. It's got the Ford cool power steering cooler, lines loopy dude down there. An Edelman Parker rad meter cap. Come on, have coolant in it. Oh, I can't see any in there, but it does look like it's leaking some on the floor. Atlanta 770 license plates. 
last tag in 05 in uh, March in Minnesota. It does have the bumper guards. She's pretty loaded up. Let's see if we can, oh yeah, Amsoil. I don't know what that, that must be where the NOS gets plumbed into the uh, air intake. And then it looks like we got some type of Amsoil engine oil filter as well as the uh, air filter. Two engine oil filters. This must tap into where the oil filter is on the engine. So this thing should be in tip top shape with all this Amsoil stuff. And the Amsoil air filter. Do not drain or add oil without owner's consent. What a deal. One mismatched blue coil wire. Let's check the dipstick, Jimmy. Think with your dipstick, Jimmy. It's full and it's black. The dipstick says D5, so uh, it's a 1975 dipstick. I did a little research and she's a 76 model because it says D6 right there. Telling you how to put coolant in there. And then cleaning off the tag back here, it says it's the 360, 390 family and it says it's 360 cubic inches. Wah, wah, wah. Why is it that 360s are such dogs? Like 390s are good, 352s are good, 360s. Sad face, I don't know. Smog era or what? But they're like the 305 of the GM small blocks. They just don't get any love. Looks like it's got that Big ugly Ford two barrel. I don't know if a 360 ever came with a four barrel. Somebody could have swapped her out at one time. We're missing the battery. Let's grab the fan pulley or the fan by the blades, I should say, and see what happens. It's only been sitting 18 years. I think that was nothing. Oh, very nice. Whoa, whoa, very nice. When we worked on our last FE, has there been more than one? I think it's just handsome Rob's bump side. And all the valve train was rusted up on that. So I've been pretty good about checking the valve train on these Fords, but wow, shoot it. Cause these rocker arms are stuck. It bent the push rods. Oh, so we, uh, we screwed it up, but um, I think it was already pre-screwed. <sighs> it's easy as this thing turns over. I don't think it's uh, gonna be a problem. Couple full revolutions there. Are the spark plugs even in it? That turns way too easy. I feel. So pretty excited that it turns over. Not excited that it's 360. And not excited at how easy it turns over, but I mean, we'll just put some compression in a can and be just fine. Let's see what else we got going on under here. It's got Motocraft plug wires, magnetic suppression cable for the coil wire. But what is this that's tapped into the number one Plug wire, is that some type of tack signal on the inside? One thing that I do like that Ford did on these was that they put inner fenders that are galvanized in there so they don't rust out. And I think these inner fenders, I'm almost positive they interchange between 67 and 72, almost positive. Somebody's gonna correct me, but I think they'll fit on 67 to 72 and I think those are painted in those pickups. What do I know though? Yeah, so high energy ignition, so we shouldn't have to clean any points. It's loose. Oh, this is gonna be an easy Ford foreshadowing. Famous last words. Duff, what are you doing back there? You giving up on this Ford already? Yeah. Well, let's check out the rest of this rig. Uh, somebody clearly got behind the bumper and pushed that in. Don't worry, we'll fix that. Nice part about these Fords is I think those grill halves are separate, so if you bang, half of it up you only got to replace half and not the whole thing because that side's banged up the surround is banged up the park lights banged up fender she's a little squishy up there a whole lot of squishy and whammied up down there hood's whammied up there Whammy! it's an f100 which means it's a half ton two-wheel drive look at this sweet blue bug deflector 2hq10 Oh, he's got the Amsoil stickers. I don't know what that is, but looks like it's American, AAA. I saw somebody say like his name, like Leroy there. And Jeanette, but it's uh, 1C, 7C. 
Remember the old Kilroy guy that would be over the top of these? That's what I always remember from these bug deflectors back when I was a kid, the guys that had the, the guy with the big nose, it was Kilroy is who it was. But anyway, the hood is definitely not mint. That looks fresh-ish, so I'm guessing that's from the auctioneer shoving this thing around. Stainless around the windshield. It is a two-tone vehicle. Look at all the lichens. How much more they lichen the roof paint versus the hood paint. But then, yeah, they latched onto the stickers. I don't know. Maybe they're racist lichens. They only like the white stuff. Triple A, $500 award. Some old guy clearly had this thing. Between all the triple A and the Amsoil stuff and the bug deflector. Yeah, Leroy was a good guy. I don't know if that's what his name was. I think it was Dwayne Dennis. I don't know. The guy who the estate had come from, but I don't even know if he was driving this thing. We did not get a title with it. This will make some good pressure washing. Duff wants to check out the inside. National Motor Club. Let's let's check out the inside, Duff. Oh. Door handle. Not so happy. Ooh. Oh yeah, it did have the stock wheels on it. And we with the hubcaps, we took those off them in here for the time being so those are good property automatic on the column it's got a spare motorcraft carburetor i'm glad when i saw that on the seat i thought oh boy engine's gonna be torn apart there was no pictures of the inside of this pickup or the engine bay or anything it's got the nice door panels is this a ranger xlt oh sure enough you can tell it's a ranger xlt because the way it is red white and blue America, uh, 21,504, more AAA stickers, Amsoil keychain, who's their Amsoil dealer? The first in synthetic lubricants, the finest in filtration. AM radio, oh, it's got a nice dash pad, nice headliner, it's got shoulder belts, is that factory on these? Is that an option, I mean? I don't know. Look at this, still got the plastic covers on the visors. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. This guy must have been like an Amsoil dealer. Oh, or this was the Otto Grumman, Grauman, Beardsley, Minnesota. Well, that's what we're calling this thing is Otto. 312.86, he was running this stuff. Otto, I kind of like that name. Is the pen from Otto as well? Sure enough, Amsoil. It's right for right now. Save energy and something about pollution. We're just gonna assume that Greta would approve. It's, uh, we're, we're saving the saving the earth with oil, Greta. How dare you! Looks like we got some battery cable ends, a whole pile of them. Some battery cables, some more battery cables. And more battery cables. Ooh, starter solenoid. Too bad it's from Napa. Some electrical outlets. Oh, those are kind of cool. Cast aluminum. A couple of them doodads. Well, if nothing else, we got some aluminum and copper to scrap. Out of the deal. Where? Wonder what that uh, plug wire thing is hooked up to in here. Community Oil, Webster, South Dakota, and Roslyn, South Dakota. What was this, 90? 821 and 90, that's 77,000. That was 05, 15 years later, 50,000. Yeah, he's putting about 10,000 a year on it. Maybe, the, you suppose the seat is like mint under here? They never are. Oh, it actually might be pretty dang good. Usually they uh, wait to put the covers on until the seats are wasted. Oh, full head seat. Big money, no whammy, no whammy. Ugh. Some rusted out soup cans. It looks like a very large animal made a nest out of something back there, empty can of heat. No gun rack in the back window, no cowboy hat rack on the roof. That's disappointing. That is a strange spot for it to rust out, don't worry. They tried sealing it up with some type of schmoo. What is that? Oh, it's like tub and tile. We don't need that, Duff. Not where we're going. I was admiring this when I walked by it the other day, and this thing's got pretty nice trim. It's rusty, 
but there's a lot of good parts for something. Just kidding, it's a really good pickup. You should own it. Aftermarket aluminum topper. Looks like it's just got one fuel tank back here. Locking gas cap. Another old man thing. Hopefully that's got the key on the ignition. Like I said earlier, these uh, white spokes came off of another vehicle. This just had steelies with hubcaps. And that's the wheel off a of Bronco. Somebody did a little DD Speed Shop body work back here. It's real nice. Like I said, go check him out. He's up in Canada, smearing mud on things. Calling himself a body man. Triple A. Again, look at that the trim back here. It's good. Otto must have been a motorcycle enthusiast. You can tell because the sticker. He was also a proud Democrat. No comment. Lutheran Layman's League out of the Missouri Synod. Synod? I don't know how you say that. Third brake light, old dudes loved all the extra lights. I'm sure he had these lights working at one time too. Oh, you can't tell who sold him the camper top. He's into the national parks and fishing. 2H whatever, I don't know what that's all about. I don't think any of this stuff was back here. This came from the auction that, like a 54 International grill. I think we're gonna sell that somebody's a wall hanger, hopefully. Apparently this accessory Ford bracket is uh, highly sought after. I get everybody emailing me. I wanted to buy this thing and it's like, well, I kinda wanna get the video done, but we would maybe take it off and sell it, but I'd rather just sell the pickup as is because shipping is insane and I don't like packaging stuff and running and shipping stuff. Old guys love putting carpet in the back of their pickup. I don't know why, but it's really good at rotting out the floors. There's probably not a single scratch in this entire floor, but it's probably rusted out from that carpet. I think this is a 39 Chevy hood. Got that in the auction. Square body S10 tailgate. Again, that was another purchase on the auction. Glass pack. I don't know if that fell off this and we threw it in here or what. It was a pretty hectic day. He's got the double decker rack up there. Probably has slept on that. Otto was known to party. He didn't drink and drive though. This was his rack for hanging his clothes up when he was living out of this thing, when he was uh, going park to park and fishing and you know, all that kind of stuff. Had the pinstripe option. I like how they go from white into orange. It's interesting. Tailpipe doesn't look too bad. Doesn't seem like it's hooked to anything. So that glass pack's probably off of this gym. It had those sweet balance thing, bead thingers behind the wheels. I actually put it back on this one. It's like, goes around the lug pattern and they got beads in it. I don't know if they work. Truckers use them. Truckers know what they're doing. So I'm sure they work just fine. Maybe we'll show you one if we get time. They're kind of like maracas stuff. Do you know how to play maracas? Oh, you need thumbs to do that. My bad. Trim around the back window as well. I think that was an option in these. I don't think the floor hole was an option. I've never seen one rust out there that bad. Thanks for pointing it out, Duff. This auction that he was at must have been uh, for an electrician. This Rauscher feller that I bought it from the estate, every one of the vehicles that I've went through thus far has a bidding number in there, multiple actually. So I think this guy liked to go to auctions and buy stuff. I'm guessing that's where that come from. Those are some big poops down there. That was a very large mammal. Anything in the glove box? Whew, new inline Ford fuel filter. A whole bunch of glass fuses. Another pen. Who's it from? From nobody. All right. Well, I guess it's a, oh, about that time to get this thing running. I don't see a tack in there. Brake controller. Yep. Sure enough. To Concha. I don't know where that tax signal is going to. Maybe he had a rev limiter on this thing, you know, from when he's getting after it. Ugh. Need a little lube on that. This mirror, I think, is factory. I don't know. I'm definitely not a Ford expert, so I reached out to one of my buddies, and he said this cable operated, remote operated adjustable from inside the cab mirror. It was like a JC Whitney or an aftermarket special. He says, that is not factory Ford stuff. Dang, I was really hoping 
but that was some factory remote mirror option but nope I said somebody put that on there later I guess you couldn't get these with factory uh, remote mirrors who knows well Duff who's our battery sponsor this week are you sleeping on the job again or what or are you just taking in all the poops over there oh yeah definitely taking in all of the poops it appears as Knickknack Paddywhack is our battery sponsor this week. Convicted hitman Jimmy Two Shoes McClarty confessed today that he was once hired to beat a cow to death in a rice field using only two small porcelain figures. Police admit this may be the first known case of a Knickknack Paddywhack. Oh look, the battery hold down bolt is even there. Fancy J bolt, even though she's been whittled down by our friend the beaver and or corrosion and it comes with a spare oh, what is that a 5 16 and a 3 8 nut no no 3 8 and a 7 16 nut what a deal huh Duff he's not impressed all right let's oh spare battery bolt too never mind we're probably gonna need that never mind uh, it is a spare what a deal and a spare vacuum plug it's got a standard ignition replacement solenoid on it let's throw that thing in there and we're going to cut the fuel line so that any of uh, 2005, who is that? Is that Obama? Obama era gasoline does not get sucked up into the carbonator. And then we'll go from there. I'm sure it's going to turn right over. Let's even clean up these battery connections. No. Let's do her up right. Seems how this thing's a bicentennial edition. Well, I don't know if it is. Ford make a bicentennial edition? Seems like everybody did. I'm sure they did. I know Mopar and GM did, so I'm sure Ford did. America. You can tell it's a replacement ground cable. All oh, the wipers are on. And now they're off. I'm going to go bump the key. You want to watch the fan with the fancy folks on the uh, interwebs? Yeah. Oh. They're delay wipers, even. All right, trying the key. And nothing. That solenoid. Oh, let's put it in park. So it's, it's not turning over with the key. So I thought, you know, oh, it's probably because we, we took it out of gear. The park. And you know, you gotta have a neutral park, neutral safety switch. You ever heard of it? So I grabbed the, the shifter. Something interesting happened. Not in a good way. You know, cause see it's it's in drive right now. So let's take it out of drive. I don't believe the entire shift column and the blinker assembly is supposed to move. Maybe this was a known fact. Maybe maybe that's what this switch is. Nope. I don't uh, know what that switch was for. That must have been for the NOS. Shut up! The good news is the seatbelt buzzer goes off. So, you know, safety third. So I think we're just gonna address that later. It's not good. And also, uh, well, the steering does kind of work. The rag joint is destroyed i don't know if we can see it yeah you can see it like it is it is gone i don't know if we could even drive this thing around the yard without doing something there so that's pretty awesome excited about that all right loser switch time it is let's hook up our loser switch here to the positive cable and to the stud marked S. What well, now? Oh, we gotta cut that fuel line. Let's do that for you. Pump any Obama gas in the beginning. Where is the fuel pump on a 360? There it is. Come on now. Just cut through it already. There. Now we shouldn't be sucking any of that bad gas up in that. Big mean motorcraft. Here we go. Oh yeah. I can even hear compression leaking out somewhere. Oh. 
sounds good. Well, I'm gonna go turn the key on. Let's check for spark, not electrocute ourselves. How about that? Catch me outside, how about that? Oakley dokley. Oakley dokley. Here we go. Let's do a little spark test action. Ooh. Somebody just folded the wire over and stuffed it in there. They don't have the brass contact on there. I guess I've never seen that before. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All kinds of spark. Ha ha! It ain't dumb if it works. Okay. Let's see how many filthy, rotten rodents are living inside of our air cleaner assembly. It's all coming together now. This thing, this thing was a race pickup duff. All the Amsoil stuff, the NOS switch. This is where he had his NOS hooked up into the uh, intake. This thing was fast. We just need to find the, oh, 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 no. No, God, please, no. How? Does that even happen? I don't even want to insert Jim Varney saying you right here because, look at, that's the mice got in there and literally pissed everything up. Oh, for cheese and rice. That's disgusting. I mean, it is literally rotting out the air cleaner assembly. Look at the carburetor. Oh yeah, that's seized. For sure. Goodness gracious. Looked like a fire took place. And then they sent it down to visit the Titanic. And then when it got back, they hit it with an atomic bomb. Wow. I've never seen an air cleaner on something with a lid and a hood on it that's that bad. Nasty. It's the original carburetor because it's got the Ford D6TE part number on it. Don't throw those away when you rebuild a carburetor. I always put that tag back on there for the next time somebody's gotta work on it. I suppose we could have unhooked it up here but then we would have been pumping gas on top of the engine and lit all the fecal matter and the leaves on fire, but that might have been the best thing. Let's see how stuck this thing is. Oh, well, the throttle linkage and the throttle blades aren't stuck. Maybe it's just the choke. I'm gonna go get some croil and we're gonna looby dooby that up in the terminology of the Oklahoman. And we're going to see if we can't get that choke open because, you know, we're inside and it's 60 degrees, so we probably don't need that choke. Maybe I'll get some compressed air and blow everything off first. Nah. All right. Let's douche her down real good. A uh, quick shout out to our sponsor this evening, Summer's Eve Feminine Hygiene Products. <laughs> when something's gone wrong and it's the smell of your thong. Summer's Eve. Douche. See if we can't get this choke flapper freed up. Put our locking pliers on this linkage. You know, all we gotta do is get it open, because let's be honest, we don't need it to work. Not for all the intense, oh yeah. Easy peasy. Just kidding. For all intents and purposes, we don't need a choke. It's fine. All right. Good news is, we probably don't have to worry about it getting sucked closed. Oh yeah, she's good. We'll hit the linkage over here just for S's and G's. What the heck, let's just hose everything down. Oh, this coil smells so good. Put a dab on your neck on each side. The ladies will flock to you when you go down to Applebee's on Friday night. Okay. I don't know what else to do other than give her a tickle of the old hot sauce. Let's see what happens when we hit the loser switch here. Okay. Let's give her a little tickle of the hot sauce. Maybe put a little on the float bowls. Singular float bowl. Oh, she's full. Splash. Good luck. Here goes nothing. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Go down. 
going, buddy. Whew. I guess the uh, throttle isn't returning. Who would have thunk? On a positive note, it seems to be running and I didn't hear any strange noises. Wowza. That went so well. Let's. Oh, look, the accelerator pump's leaking. Imagine that. Let's try her again. What is hissing over here? I'm sure it has. Is it vacuum? Or is it this whole uh, oiling system of AMS oil? Let's get this neat little petcock. What happens when we open that? Nothing. I would imagine that's for bleeding the air out of this system when you change oil or something. Who knows? I'll have to read the destruction manual. Designed for filtration of synthetic lubricants. Oh man, make sure we only put synthetic in here. All right, let's see if it's run for a little while longer, maybe just idle. Not bad. Little bell train clattering going on. Let me go take a peek at the gauges. What is hissing? Why is that head bolt? Whoa, whoa, hold on. Hold the show. So let me give you a little FE identification history. These have like a 189 pound intake manifold. It's something huge. It's seriously, it's like 60 or 80 pounds. But the intake manifold goes, whatever, a quarter of the way into the valve cover. That's how you can identify an FE. This bolt right here for the valve cover actually goes into the intake. So you gotta pull the valve covers off to get the intake off. And you know what I'm saying. I don't know much about much. Oh, those aren't head bolts, are they? See those three bolts there that are loose? They're fine thread though. I think that's for emissions. Yeah, there must be some emissions. <laughs> Emissions plugs that were uh, in here, those whatever, some type of tubes that did something or other. I was thinking those were head bolts that were loose and I was hearing compression escape, but, and that might, no, that would be exhaust coming out of there so that wouldn't be built up. I don't know what I'm hearing. It's like, it's like there's a vacuum hiss or a oil pressure hiss. There's, there's a built up pressure somewhere that's escaping after the engine turns off, so. How's your, uh... I know you got a really good nose, but how's your hearing? Can you, can you pinpoint that for us? I mean, if it was a poor little baby bunny rabbit or a kitty cat in distress, you could chase him down, but how about vacuum leaks? Oil leaks? Well, if it's oil, we should see it, but I'm afraid that it's like air, especially with this filtration system up here. Maybe let's, let's just not give it fuel and let's crack this petcock and see if we can't get oil coming out up here. You hear that? Something dripping. Because I checked the gauge inside and it's uh, stuck at L. Why, did, why does Ford like to do the L and the H? Like, give me some numbers. Like, what's low? Is 10 PSI low? Is 5 PSI low? Is 40 PSI low? That's one thing that irritates me about Fords. Even like on the, the O5s, the late model stuff, it's L and H. And then they're just like programmed through the computer that, oh, if it sees anything more than 8 PSI, it just sits in the middle. Weird. Yeah, hear anything down there? Yeah, well, we got a coolant leak. Is that what's hissing? Uh, somebody shoving this thing around with a forklift or a skid steer did not do the radiator any good deeds. I can tell you that. Should we just go ahead and drain the petcock on that and save the mess on the floor, Greta? How dare you? Probably not a bad idea. I don't see any oil down here, so that doesn't explain what the hissing is. Hey, no, that's coolant. We know we don't drink that stuff. All right, I'm gonna drain the pet cock, drain this coolant to try to prevent this mess from, you know, going to the floor drain. Just doing our part, Greta. And then we're gonna come back and try to figure out what's hissing over here. I don't know, it should be interesting. Let's try to figure out why this thing wasn't draining until we got it in the shop. And I thought maybe it's because we jarred something, bringing it in here. Not from pushing up here, because we pulled from the back, but. It's not green as that coolant looks. I wonder if the cooling system wasn't frozen up, but who knows. 
I'm going to go turn the ignition off because there's no point in running the battery dead. It's not like we're going to burn the points out. I don't know what uh, leaving the ignition on with a coil does on electronic ignition, but we're going to turn that off and we're going to see if we can't determine where this hissing is coming from. Maybe there's a priming process for this old AMS oil engine conglomeration that I'm unaware of. Do you know anything? Okay, you just keep an eye and make sure that coolant or whatever's in there makes it into the pan. I was wondering why that hadn't leaked out in the month and a half this thing's been sitting in the yard, but it was probably froze up. Hopefully it didn't damage the engine. Also, I was worried about, I got, I got excited. I thought when I was grabbing tools, uh, you know, I should probably crawl underneath and make sure this thing's in park. Is it in gear? But we've had it running, so either it's super low on transmission fluid or it's in park. But I should still go underneath because safety, and uh, we don't want to run over anything, especially all Clarky poo over here. It'd be a shame if it ran into that boat anchor. So I'm gonna crawl underneath and make sure it's in park. See what's going on with that shift linkage. I think we're really gonna need a steering column and a rag joint for this thing. You got one of those laying around, Duff, for a Dead side Ford? Yeah, me either. It most definitely was not in park, so I'm guessing the transmission is either smoked or it's really low. So we lucked out there. Uh, good news is our overhead door back here would have definitely attempted to stop this thing had it taken off at high RPMs that first time we started it. That would have been something to see. That's straight up there with Watch West work, you know, running into all his uh, oil containers in the back wall of his shop. Man, that was dumb. I can't believe I did that. So another crisis averted. Now let's see if we can get some oil pressure. Get, either get the gauge working or find out what that hissing is. Because we don't want a snake under the hood. Sneaky, sneaky snakes. Snake. I'm a slathery little sneaky snake. All right, oil petcock thinger is open. Also, petcock thinger is open for cool. Let's bump her over for a bit, see what happens. Come on, oil. Okay, definitely have oil up there. So, I mean, we should have oil pressure. Sweet. We definitely have volume, so... Let's do it again, just for S's and G's. Oh yeah, it's fine. So with all the oil in these lines, two filters, I'm guessing this thing took like five quarts originally. This thing must take like eight quarts of oil. So I'm guessing each of these is a quart. There's probably close to another quart in that line. So seven and a half quarts, all of that. Expensive oil changes on this whole hot rod here. Well, I'm not hearing that hissing noise under the hood, but it's kind of overpowered by the furnace and by the petcock draining coolant out of there. So I guess we're just gonna Wait till the coolant stops draining or who am I kidding? We don't, we ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Let's keep cranking this thing over and see what happens. We gotta find that noise. Ooh, Petcock seems to be slowing down. What a fun word to say. Not here. Well, since this thing runs so good, it's still hissing coolant out there and I can't hear my hissing, so either it went away or we gotta find it. So let's get the boat tank, let's hook it up to that fuel pump or the carburetor or both and get some fresh fuel hooked up to this thing and then we can run it for longer, seeing if that hiss is there. We'll go from there. Got our boat tank hooked up here, let's see if the fuel pump on this thing works and hopefully this thing just takes off, runs great and then we gotta address the steering column and the transmission doesn't seem to move and the carburetor sticking, and pretty much everything else. What do you think? Fuel pump gonna work? Oh yeah, I'm sure it's just fine.
still hearing the hissing. Maybe it's an egg on drugs. That would be an expensive egg. Sizzling on the manifold. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. What is sizzling? All right, we got our 12 volt electric clickety clack going in a puddle of fuel, so Duff's keeping an eye out for fires. He's on fire watch today. Let me know if my right boot catches fire, would you? That'd be great. I want to look like Lieutenant Dan here. Thought I'd try out my sea legs. But you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. I don't see any fuel leaking out up here, which is surprising. Let's see if it'll run on its own now. Here goes nothing. fuel up here. Oh yeah, there's definitely fuel pressure up there. Oh! Float was stuck. The floodgates have opened. clickety clack and see if the mechanical pump pushes past the float like that. I'm guessing it will. This carburetor's gonna have to come apart. Oh yeah, you can see it flowing on already. Oh, come on. 60% of the time it works every time when you smack a carburetor with a hammer. 60% of the time it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Oh no, we got some sparkage jumping off the plug wire onto the coil housing. That's good. Consider all the gas spilled on the intake. Yeah, we're gonna have to take that carb apart and find a different carb because every time the fuel pump is centric, Opens up the fuel pump, pushes the diaphragm, pushes fuel up here. You can see it burbling out the vents up here. So the float, the fuel is pushing past the float, overflowing the bowl. Not gonna be good. Plus we got some spark action coming off of whatever that is. How does Ford number these? One, two, I don't know. Is it one, two, three over here? Well this says seven on it, so I'm guessing it's number seven. I don't know why that is arcing on the coil. Anyway, we're going to turn the key off and pull a motorcraft apart. Yay! Yay! The inside doesn't look too, oh, there's our problem. The float is seized on the pivot there. I mean, that doesn't look good in there, but that's fine. Well, let's take it apart a little bit further, see if we can't get the pivot cleaned up here on the float. And then we'll just wing it, put it all back together. Something's not happy in there. Took this here fuel line, hooked her up to the fuel filter, and then I was blowing on it, lifting that float up and down to see if it's doing what it should. So I would say the needle and seat's working. That was way handier than lifting that carburetor up to my mouth. And, I mean, the end of this hose is a lot cleaner than that. 
fuel filter inlet, right? Maybe. That's a pretty neat trick there, huh? Now, I'm trying to debate if we put the thing together and put it back on there, or if we just put it on there like this and see what it's doing. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put it together. We're just gonna set it up there, hook fuel up to it, and see if it's doing what it should. Because that way, if it doesn't work, we can keep addressing it. And if I put it all together and I put it on there, it's surely not gonna work. And then we'll have to take it apart again. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Put it together just like this. Set it on there anyway, test her out. Seems like a good idea to duffel up, I guess. Yeah. Well, it seems like it's working. I had a leak around this fuel hose I put in and it was leaking around the needle and seat area when it's got pressure, but with the lid on it, that's not gonna be a big deal. So hopefully we fixed it. We got the fuel pump running right now and it's not doing anything. So I think we got her, we got her uh, fixed up. It was just hanging up on this shaft here that that float's supposed to pivot on. He's a busy lemon squeezy, right? Who needs a kid? I'm sure that carburetor's just fine. Slam it all back together. Be that much closer to whatever it is that we're getting to on this thing. All right, let's turn the key on. See what happens. I see it's leaking out the accelerator pump, but. We're not going to put a new accelerator pump in that crusty old carburetor because it'd be a waste. All right, what's that spring do? Oh, it's hooked up. We're good to go. There's a bonus spring laying down here that's not hooked to anything, though. What can we do with that? We can use all of the spring action on that throttle we can get. There. Oh, yeah. Real good. See what happens. Hopefully we don't get fuel bubbling out there. Not too bad, we definitely had worse. It's still idle, it's kind of high. Play with the throttle, it'll come down, so. Well, I guess we gotta address the steering and the uh, shift linkage. So, hook a rope to each wheel to steer, and cut a hole in the floor for a shift linkage with a yardstick hook up to that. Well, that's not a good idea. Oh yeah, we gotta figure out the fuel tank too. I'm sure the brakes are fine. Well, that's why it's idling so high. Might have a vacuum leak there. Let's try to figure out where that hissing was coming from. Took that out. The hiss is still there, so we gotta address that too. Duff, what'd you determine on the steering column situation? Duff says steering column's gotta come out because we got 110 degrees of slop here. And that's no bueno. That's not gonna be good taking the curves at 140. And the uh, shift linkage collar is kind of doing what it wants. So here's what I think happened. I think somebody was shoving this thing around with a skid steer and hit the wheels, bumped the wheels, did whatever with the wheels. These don't have a steering lock. And took out the rag joint and that allowed the steering shaft to do whatever it wants in the steering column. And when that slid up, that allowed the shift linkage, shift collar to slide up and now that's no longer engaged. So we gotta take that whole column apart and get that re-engaged and then we gotta get a rag joint installed down there and we'll go from there. 
I think I have a column for one of these. I, I boned out a couple of these pickups in order to put the 78.9 chassis underneath my 71 Ford Ranger XLT. So I feel like I have a steering column laying around. I don't know if the rag joint's on it or not, but anyway, I'm gonna take this out. We'll see if we can get the shift linkage hooked up. I mean, if we can get it to shift, we can drive it. We can, we can do donuts with that play in the column. Long story short, we're ripping this column. But before we do that, we're gonna do some cleaning in here because I gotta get my face down in there and you know, you wanna have a clean undercarriage before anybody puts their face there. So we're gonna do some cleaning. Maybe we'll find some good stuff down there, but probably not. Pookie even said, oh yeah, I remember that. I was throwing stuff inside the cab and you were like, don't throw that in there, throw that out because it's covered in raccoon poop. And sure enough, that's a big old coon turd right there. So yeah, we're gonna do some cleaning here because Pookie had to look up what the disease is you get from living with raccoons or something. And I just left it at that. We're gonna do some cleaning. Of course, we're not gonna put a mask on. We're here gonna put some gloves on though. Oh, look at that. A couple of eighth inch, no, quarter inch barb fittings and a shut off. That's a good score. Throwing the clear hose away though. Lighted switch. Maybe they were having carb issues before. That flow was sticking. That's why it came with a spare. Oh man, that seat is pretty nice. Very nice, I like. Very nice, how much? John Deere amp gauge, lucky. Unlucky for me, I hate amp gauges. Well, of course the seat's torn up on the passenger side. How does that happen? That's a lot of poopy. But that seat's actually pretty respectable. I'm guessing the critters got into it there and that's what ruined it. Oh well, it's not on my side. Sorry, Duff. Oh, you just gotta put that foam back in there and be Good as new. Well, I'm guessing we gotta take this uh, cover off down here first. Go from there. What were they trying to do here? Yeah, let's see if she's ready to slide out of there. Let's see what else we forgot. Come on now. What's your problem? Yeah, we'll get it. Got it. So like I said, I think what happened here is this reg joint broke, and that's what was holding the whole steering column down. So everything slid up, as you can see right here, by the wear marks on the shift column, whatever you want to call it. And so if we slid that back into place, there'd be that much of a gap between that and the steering wheel. So that's what makes me think everything slid up. We're going to pull the steering wheel off and see what we could find. Because I'm guessing, much like the three on the tree on the column that we tore apart in the Ford Bronco, there's a tube in here, a notch this slides up and down in. And that's what... Uh, there's your inside shaft for your steering shaft. There's a tube for your shift linkage. And then there's your outside tube. So you can, I'm moving this shift shaft or the shift tube and it's not doing anything up top. Uh, my fear is we may have damaged something else, but let's rip into it and find out. Instead of just being a chunk of rubber, it looks like they had some plastic or poly or something in there. Interesting. The ones I'm used to seeing, the GM ones, are just rubber.
Boy, this is bringing back nightmares. What are these pieces? Oh, that's the shift indicator. We don't need that. Not where we're going. So this is our shift lever, and it must slide onto a keyway, and was when everything shifted ahead, it came out the keyway, so it was just flopping around. So hopefully we can get this back in place. Columns back together, dug through our stash. Hopefully this is the same, it's off of like a 57 to 60 Ford big truck. It's just a three quarter inch, 36 spline. Ford doesn't have it so that this rag joint bolts on, it's whatever, these bolts are basically riveted. So this, you gotta buy this whole piece new, which is what you should do, but we don't do everything right. It's a little bit different. They got some kind of safety interlock mechanism, yada, yada, yada built into this. 76 model which is mostly destroyed so the design of these things is is if this this is just a dampener for vibration road vibrations that rubber rag joint and if that ever fails then you still got these two great big pins in between and they'll mash in between those slots right there so you're just gonna just like we had here you're gonna have a whole bunch of play but you're not gonna die hopefully so i'm gonna see if this is gonna fit on that steering sector and then hopefully it bolts up to this and we should be able to slam this thing all back together. Another tech tip, Ford's got this rubber bushing in here and that's all that holds the shift shaft instead of having a cotter key or a bolt or anything like that. And these things get stiffer than a wedding, you know what. And I've never done it before, I just use brute force. This time, since we gotta put it back together, I didn't wanna do that. So I put the heat gun on it and then warmed her up a bit and then it popped right out. So I'm gonna pop that bushing off the shift shaft, put it in here, and then we'll heat it up again and hopefully it goes back together. Or maybe we'll just use brute force, but the heat definitely helps out. All right, let's hope this works. What do you think, Duff? 57 to 60 Ford fridge stuff gonna be the same as a uh, dent side? Yeah, I wouldn't hold my breath either. Oh man, this thing is a lifesaver when you're disconnecting these shift linkages on these furs. First time I've ever done it. I've been thinking about it for a while. A little heat goes a long ways, that's what I would say. So get yourself a heat gun. Don't use your Bic lighter or your propane torch. Get yourself one of these suckers. Go down to your local hardware store. Amazonia, this is a Wagner. I've had this thing for probably 15 years. Works pretty good. It's got a bunch of different heat settings. and high and low and you can set the temp and it's got a cool yeah it's good wes has got some weller or something like that that looks a little bit fancier he's got this adapter that wraps around so you can heat shrink and solder wires and not melt the ones behind it yeah that one's real money though get yourself a cheap one or a good one all right i uh, got our shift linkage adjusted we got uh the transmission park shifter in park just got to tighten the Three ace nut down there on the transmission is all you got to do. So I think this thing's pretty much ready to do what it. We should probably put some coolant back in the radiator. I looked. I don't have a radiator for this thing. It holds coolant for a while. 
And we should check the brakes, see if there's any fluid in there and if they work. We should probably check the transmission. It doesn't look real soggy underneath, but this thing was definitely in gear. I'm pretty sure, maybe, when we started it up and it didn't move, so yeah. Let's check some fluids. And then we'll go for an RIDE. Duff's gonna open the door for us. Well, you suppose you got brake use? Oh, she's full! Well, not full, but I mean, it's not empty. I'm a, I'm an optimist. The master cylinder is half full instead of being half empty. Optimism, you guys know me. Just a happy-go-lucky guy. Every day is a great day when you're working on rusty old birds. Let's go press the pedal and see what happens. Only been sitting 18 years, Duff. I'm sure it's fine. Oh yeah, even returns. I think we're good. Oh yeah, it didn't seem like it was cranking over with the key, so. We'll have to figure that out, if that's in the uh, wire harness. I'm not sure what we got going on here. I tried figuring that out. That wire that's clamped onto the number five wire, that, whatever that, what I think would be a tack signal, just runs through the firewall and dead ends there. It's got some connector on the end of it. Almost looks like a auxiliary port connector, headphone, or I don't know. Hook it up to your Walkman. It gives it all the horsepowers. The Walkman from Sony, the one and only. All right, I'm gonna hook the battery back up and uh, we'll see if we can't get the ignition switch working. Oh yeah, we gotta figure out the fuel tank scenario. We're probably just gonna ratchet strap to the front uh, bumper in the grill. Dragster style, moon tank. Oh, yeah. The son of a biscuit, this thing does have an anti-theft system. Don't crank over, push the button. Doesn't crank over, but if you turn the key to crank, push the button. What a deal. Nobody's ever gonna steal Otto's hot rod. I'm sure there's something screwed up in the wiring, but maybe he put that in there as a neutral safety bypass, anti-theft deterrent. It's like the club. Remember those things? I say we can beat those thieves with the club. A club, officer? The club. All right. You ready to go for an R-I-D-E? You gotta tie up that fuel tank. And then we'll be getting real close. What do you got in your hair? Where did you find a cocklebur this time of year? What did you just point out? Look at that giant wasp slash bee's nest in that dog leg down there. there any honey in there, Duff? Hopefully those things have been sleeping for a while and ain't gonna wake up. That would be no bueno. I figured I'd show you guys, potential buyers, whatever, Ford lovers, this. This is the plate that holds the steering column to the firewall and seals it up. Look at how rusty this thing is. Come on now, work with me hand. Anyway, it doesn't flake off, but she's uh, real soft. I'm guessing that's from brake fluid running down the firewall. I don't know what else it could be. And she's uh, real soft right there. Carpet shouldn't move when you kick it. Duff don't care, he wants to go for a ride. What other kind of smells are in there? Don't fall through the floor now. All right, you keep inspecting, I'm gonna tie up that fuel tank. Oh man, look at that sweet setup. That ain't going nowhere. He's going nowhere. Where you going? Nowhere. Well, Duff, I think we're about ready to try old auto out here on the uh, hot lap track. Can you go for a ride? Of course you are. All right, let's do this. Oh, I didn't put the air cleaner on because I figured it's better off sucking anything that's under the hood than sucking anything that's in there. You know, I could clean it, but <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, what up? Let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride. Just got to thinking, we forgot to see if the transmission shifts. Stupid seatbelt buzzer. All right, ready for some action? See what Otto's got in her. I'm sure that AMS oil really makes her rip. Almost had her.
tries to move, but it doesn't. I think we got a hung up brake somewhere. Yeah, all right. Sorry for the false hope. We're gonna get out. Check, see which wheel's not turning. Maybe it's the transmission, I don't know. It seems like it's, you know, like when you're holding the brake. It, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the pedal going right to the floor. Okay, gotcha, thanks. Let's go check it out. There's so much help. You called it, Duff. Neither rear wheel is turning, so let's uh, blow those apart. See what we can't finger out there. Oh, this Ford is just, it's killing me, Smalls. You're killing me, Smalls! Let's get that out of the way, too, huh? What do you suppose the deal is, Duff? Hopefully the rear end ain't froze up. We could do without three weeks of rear ends froze up. You're not helping me right now. Went underneath, tried adjusting the brakes, and they are non-adjustable. So we're gonna go the old-fashioned way and just pull that drum right off there. That'll tell us what's going on. No messing around today, Duff. Get yourself one of these Astro 78830 brake drum pullers. You will have no regrets. That's my credo, no regrets. Mm -hmm. You have no regrets? Dad? No, nope. like not even a single letter. No nah. way, <laughs> not me. I can see the drum bulging out around the axle pilot there. So we're gonna give her a little heat there. We finally got it off the pilot. Now she's hanging up on the shoes. You know what that means, stuff? Brute force. So this thing is really hung up on there. These brake drums are probably shot. They're super readily available. We're going back to our <laughs> origins and we're just gonna give her the old torch ventilation and carry on with it. Sorry, Ford Pierce, who have to have numbers matching brake drums. We tried. You can see just how much rust fell out of there. So if that tells you anything about the condition of the internals or the drum itself, we're not uh, wasting anything here. Easy lemon squeezy. And plus, since we left all the brake stuff intact, we should still have brakes inside. Whereas if we took this drum off, all the fluid's gonna go out here when they hit the brakes and expand, and we might not have front brakes, but this way we should still have front brakes. We're gonna have rear brakes, they just aren't gonna stop the wheels. On to the next one. There's them there balance beads I was telling you about. Come on now. Looks like it's got a five on five and a five on five and a half. It's like a maraca. We're gonna leave the old balance beads off. No need for those where we're going. Also these tires look like they may have kittens at any time now, so Godspeed, whatever you are. A marrow way. Yeah, nothing but the finest Ferrado here. All right, try number two. Check the front tires. They both turn, so shouldn't be a problem. It almost feels like we have brakes, but I wouldn't rely on it. Second teenth times a charm. Oh, so many ignition switches. Yeah, I know. It's special. Just like you. Let's check brakes and transmission. Brakes 100%. 
Not so much. Transmission, yes. Whew. Let's go ahead and get the overhead door open before we uh, start going that way. But the neutral safety switch is bypassed with all these switches. What's, oh, it's water running off the topper. You wanna go outside? Go look for some birds. Get out of here, go sniff some bone rubber. Hopefully we didn't ruin the bedsides, because that would be terrible. Well, Otto, she really rips. I never had uh, something blow both tires so fast. It's all the torques of the 360. FE, if you're not familiar with them, FE stands for effing expensive. Even the Ford folks will tell you that. Well, you know I hate flat tires, so I guess we're going to see what we can round up the scab on the back. I don't know if we're going to wrap this thing here. You know we're not. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. Great. Grand. Wonderful. Good. Great. Grand. Wonderful. Yeah. No bueno. Oh, the tread even came off of that one. Hey, there's my tube. Hate when you blow out a rubber. That second one, she's pretty violent. It actually took the uh, pan and 
knock it off the uh, sun visor, which I need right now. And it's uh, took our trim off our box side. It sat there and spun for a little while. Who's gonna clean this up? Duff? All right, I guess I'll do it. What a gem, just a real treat. I think we put the wrong tires on the back because that one looks pretty good. Oh, those are both off the Bronco. You can tell by the way that it is. Whoops. All right, back to work. And then you got this guy just out free range, bird, deer, rabbit, fecal matter hunting. No thanks to that guy. We got some fresh 235, 75, 50 and May pops back on here. Yeah, that thing's not going to go. We're going to probably destroy an entire set of tires. I think the one on this side's moderately acceptable. I don't don't get too close to it, Duff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's going to let loose too. But we're going to we're going to do it again. This is kind of fun. At least the weather's decent out for it. I mean, is there a bad day for doing snow nuts? I think not. What do you think? Oh yeah, he's ready for more. Oh yeah, she's back to life, Dub. Time for more donuts. Snow nuts. Powder donuts? Yeah. No way it starts right up. There's a trick to it. <laughs> We should probably just call her a day here because we blew the skins off both those i think they're still holding air somehow but duff thinks we're bird hunting because it sounds like a 12 gauge may have went off twice i think we should probably just quit while we're ahead this thing's pretty fun it does run pretty decent but it needs some brakes and some tires and some floor pans so you should own this thing hit us up Price and availability in the description down below. 1976 Ford F100, no title, Ranger XLT. Comes with a topper and about uh, 9.5 tenths of a visor. Real good dash pad. Morski Repair at gmail.com. You should own auto. Put it in your fleet, right, Duff? He's like, yeah, this thing needs to go away before we turn the quarter panels off it or somebody dies. Well, that guy's still holding air but it's not holding treads. Quarter panel's still mostly there. Probably stand back, Duff. Oh, yeah. Well, we knocked that trim loose, and that trim loose, and uh, blew that tread rate off. All the torques of the 360 FE. And that box side support definitely wasn't hanging before either. Whoopsies. All right, we got this 1976 Ford F100 Ranger XLT Auto, I think we're calling him. Running for the first time in 18 years, 2005, 2023. I think that's my math. Bull haulers. Oh no. He's a tanker yanker. Straight pipe life. All right. I think you should probably own auto. Hit us up. Price and availability in the description down below. Mortsky repair at gmail.com. Click the link down below for some merch. I'm not wearing any except for this hat, and I don't know if these are gonna be available to the general public. Comment down below if you wanna get yourself a Mordski beanie. It's a Port Authority, it's fleece. It's nice and warm. I need some gloves, because my fingers, I can't feel them. And uh, follow us on Facebook, Mordski Repair, Instagram. We got Patreon if you wanna support us there. Uh, the Duff Approved Club. We uh, send out some notifications when we're running some discounts on the merchandise. All the ways to support us are just watching, commenting, all the good stuff. Check out the other videos. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. FEs that run and blow tires off, 
real fun. Fixing tires, not so fun. What are we gonna work on next? At least we're not moving snow this week. Oh, somebody's gonna have to pick up all that rubber in the yard. <laughs> 